Hi, I'd like to, to uh, discuss how we match tubes using the Hickok 539B. The uh, particular lot that I want to look at now is uh, the General Electric JAN5654 tubes. We receive these in uh, sealed boxes. Um, beautiful condition for the boxes and the tubes inside. This particular lot, they come in boxes of uh, 200, came out of uh, Utah. And we buy these from uh, surplus dealers. And the important thing is uh, they're in sealed boxes. In particular, if they come out of Utah, they'll be beautiful just from the, the climate control. And let me show you what we see inside. Let's see if I can pop this one up. Again, these have been sealed since 1988. They're getting harder and harder to come by now in the sealed boxes. So we've got, in this particular box, um, 200 of the uh, 5654W, which is the ruggedized uh, military version of a 5654. It's a great substitute for a, um, a 6J1 tube in a headphone amp or a preamp or an audio amplifier and also a very good substitute um, or upgrade also for 6AK, most 6AK5s. Alright, so at any rate, um, if we look at the actual tubes, again we can see 1988, alright, beautiful condition. And we get these in bulk quantities of uh, thousands of tubes. And Maybe a bit hard to read, but uh, if you look closely, it's marked 5654. It'll have a uh, uh, production code on it for the plant. And uh, these came out of the GE Kentucky facility. All right. Great looking tubes. You can also still see the blue tint um, on the pins here. So what I'll do in the next segment, because I've got to set this up, is uh, show you how we would match them on the uh, Hickok 539B and we'll do a, uh, a, a shorts test, leakage test, gas test um, go ahead and measure the, the GM, the mutual conductance or transconductance and also we'll verify that the plate current um, is within the range that, uh, that we anticipate or expect for a tube so let me come back in a few minutes after I've laid out the tubes and I'll show you how we actually uh, um, test them, the quality checks. Okay, what I'd like to do now is show you how we'd actually run a, a, a GM test and a, a quality test on the 5654W tubes. Um, so what I typically do is, is do visual inspections first, um, make sure that uh, the mica plates look okay, the spacers, everything looks fine. Um, if the tube passes a visual inspection, also you're looking for any corrosion that may have occurred on the pins, but uh, again, these were in sealed boxes, probably in climate control for, for decades. Um, everything looks great on these. If there's any bent pins, easy enough to fix, and you'll find those even on these new old stock pins from time to time. Just run them through a pin straightener. And let's go ahead and uh, insert this in. I've set the machine up previously, it's all warmed up. I'm going to start a timer, let it warm up for uh, two and a half minutes. Okay, so we're just about uh, the two and a half minute mark on the timer. Okay, let's uh, pause this. So the next step is to uh, measure for short and leakage. You can either do that at the beginning before the tube is completely warmed up, or I like to wait, wait a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and do the shorts test. And again, I'm just going to run through this quickly because I've shown this on another video with the 539B testing a Raytheon 6AK5 tube. No shorts. Now if we look at the, uh, the leakage, and again, we're looking up at this scale. The nice thing about the 539 series has a very sensitive leakage test. And there's absolutely zero deflection of the needle. And again, look at the other video for more details. Now we're ready to run a... Uh, 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 GM test to check that. So uh, let's go ahead and make sure that the bias voltage, the 539 series is one of the few testers you go back and make sure that everything's trimmed okay. Let's go over the meter here. 
The third scale down, this is the 15,000 micromole range. Each of these minor divisions is 250. And so if you get right on top of this, we're at 5250 micromoles plate current. Um, again, this is just another quality check, 11.6. We want to make sure it's not excessive, um, either too high or too low outside the bounds. And let testers, me as well as the 752 and 750, we can do a life test. And on this particular series, the 539 series, we have cathode activation. We go from normal to test. And what we're going to be doing when we do that is decrease the filament voltage, um, the heater voltage, by roughly 10%. And what we're looking for is for is a uh, whether or not we have any change in the uh, mutual conductance. And I think the Hickok manual specifies 20%. I would actually keep it quite a bit tighter than that. Maybe a 5% is all I would accept. So we flip the test. Um, again, essentially no variation. We're looking for any downside deflection of this. So this too passes all of those uh, all of those particular tests. The next one would be the uh, the gas test and I'll run through it very quickly I've got in more detail in another te tester and maybe it'll show you why I don't like to run the gas test on here so what I typically do is run through a series of these tests that we're on tubes that we're trying to match up maybe uh, run through 200 or 400 but perform the gas test on another piece of equipment so they don't make any mistakes because you're flipping back and forth between switches on this one a very time consuming process on this particular model at any rate what we have to do is we flip the bias range to 50 volts here. We go to function switch in the D position, and this is actually in the errata sheets that came with the manual for the 539. So if you're running 539 and this doesn't look familiar, I would advise you go out and uh, try to get an update, updated manual. Now what we're going to do, and again, this is in another video, so let me just go through this quickly. Um, we press gas one, the P5 switch, and now we're going to adjust this back down to 500. So again, you can see why I uh, really don't like to, to run them on this one. Back down to 500 on this scale. All right. So I'm at the 500 mark. Now I'll press the gas to the P6 button. And if we have more than two deflections, upward deflections, then we've got a problem. Um, nope. Essentially, we've got, I don't know, I, I would say a tenth of a minor division and the Hickok specification is you want to make sure you don't have more than two divisions deflection when you press press gas to test so this would also pass the gas test the reason I don't like to run it on this machine it's very easy when you've you've had a long day to make a mistake because you've got to go back make sure you get the proper range on the bias you've got to readjust the bias again for your particular test for the 5654W that's with the 1.8 volt You've also got to make sure you switch this back. So all in all, it's uh, the 539 is a, a great piece of equipment, um, but uh, the gas test leaves something to be desired. Um, I typically try to run them on another machine that I've got great confidence in for the gas test and one heck of a lot easier to run. So I'll get a series of 100, 200 and tubes, shift them over to another machine for the gas test. All right, so that's how we would run a quality check. So what we've done is, again, to summarize a shorts test, the leakage test, which is very sensitive um, to look for any inner element problems in, a, in the tube. We run a GM test. We do a quality check to make sure that the play current is within the bounds, lower or upper bounds, that we would tolerate. And I've got a feel for um, what's best for audio applications that I utilize um, for current. And I try to keep the tubes within, if I'm going to match a pair, in terms of micromo, I'll match them within uh, 250 micromo, and for the uh, plate current measurement, I'll make sure they're within uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 milliamp difference between the tubes. And I, I can do that because I've got thousands and thousands of these 56, 54 tubes to go through. Um, the other thing which we do for the quality check again is a life test. I think that's very important. If we see any de decrease in the micromo reading, um, I look for about a 5%, I would discard. Now, what, the other thing I want to do is, is uh, make a couple of points. If we have a, a, a sealed box of tubes, 200 tubes, we typically are rejecting anywhere from 50 to maybe 80 of the tubes that come in that box. And that may be because of um, 
uh, mutual conductance readings, it may be because of leakage, maybe because of shorts, it may be because I don't think that the plate current is within the bounds or the range that I would like for a high fidelity audio application. Now, you can also find shorts. And uh, one of the things I've seen is you can buy lots of, I guess, five sleeves of five tubes. I've seen them go relatively inexpensive. Um, the problem is that unless these are tested, you don't know if this has leakage, maybe this tube, maybe this has a short, maybe this has a low GM. So make sure if you're going to use these in a headphone application or other audio application, at least make sure that they're fully tested and that um, you've got them well matched. And what I want to show is that you've got to be careful um, if they're not tested. This was, uh, again, one of the, this particular tube I found has a short from the same lot of tubes. And I may find in this particular box probably anywhere from five to ten tubes that uh, either have leakage or shorts. But let me show you very quickly. I don't want to go through all the tests. I just want to show you what would be the first step. Um, just to essentially prove that you've got to be careful um, unless these tubes have been tested. All right, the tube's in. Again, we can run a shorts test and a leakage test, hot or cold. Let's go to the leakage test. And again, you're looking at the shorts here. And you can see that we've got a uh, short, you can go to the Hickok manual, um, or just from memory you can tell what this particular position and what the shorts means. At any rate, a short. Um, you can run a leak, it says I would stop there. As soon as you see that, you stop, discard that tube. But at any rate, we also, you can look at the leakage now. All right, um, toss it. All right, so get rid of that tube. Um, so again, um, be cautious when you, you purchase tubes unless you've got a piece of test equipment. It doesn't have to be a Hickok 539B or a Hickok 752 or, or so forth. Just make sure that if you purchase tubes that haven't been tested and haven't been matched, you run through and take care of it on your own. Um, so at any rate, the next step would be once we've tested a box of these or two boxes of these, we'll spread them out and uh, look at these the series of tubes and uh, begin to pair them up as best we can.